they get converted into the equivalent URL. So links can sometimes contain sensitive information. They might contain user ID. They might contain a, a secret hash, for example. Um, in this case here, this is a, the idea of a Google document. Um, if we could somehow get that and drag it out of a page, that's pretty good. But links aren't all that interesting. What we really want is the content of a page. So text selections are draggable. What I mean by that is if you select some text from a page in a web browser, you can then drag that out of the, out of the browser um, onto another page. So we, somehow we need to be able to get the user to first select some text on the page and then drag it out. Um, and that would work, but it sounds pretty tricky. Um, but it is possible. So here's how we do it. This is a, a document which, um, let's say we want to, we know the URL of it, but we don't know the content. So if the user is authenticated and has access to the document, we want, might want to, to try and steal the content of this from the user. So again, we use the hidden iframe concept. And first of all, we place in the hidden iframe, we, we target the top of the page. Then the user starts to drag. So again, um, for example, at the beginning, I showed you the sliding block puzzle. So the first time we start to drag a piece, um, that starts to create a selection. And obviously, this page is quite long. And we don't want the user to have to drag all the way to the bottom of, of the document. But what we can do is as soon as the user starts to, as soon as the user has held down the mouse button, we can then position the iframe, the, the document inside the iframe, so that the bottom of the document is, is targeted. What that means is that as, you, as soon as the user has moved the mouse, even by a small amount, with the mouse button held down, the entire document has been selected. So then the user finishes that drag, and then we need to get the user to drag again. And so in this case, we would target position C. At this point, all the text on the page will be, will be selected. And then we get the user to drag. Again, this would be the, uh, an example at the beginning. This would be moving a puzzle piece for the second time, and it would drag the content from the iframe and drop it onto the attacker's page. Now I'm gonna show you an example of this at the end to see exactly how that works. Um, when I show you the clip jacking tool. Now the drag and drop API in web browsers lets you transfer plain text from one place to another. Now in the case of a document, um, the text content is, is valuable information. But if we think about uh, authenticated web pages, if we think about the actual HTML source of that, there can often be some fairly interesting and sensitive data in there. So for example, one example is cross-site request forgery tokens. So on a page that has cross-site request forgery protection, there will be a, a form that has normally a hidden, a hidden field that will have this random token in. Now if we can steal that token, then the site suddenly becomes vulnerable to cross-site request forgery. Each request that we send in, we can include this token and perform an automated attack. Now, the way sites implement cross-site request forgery vary. Sometimes each token is valid only once, but sometimes tokens are valid um, either for an entire session or maybe for a lim limited amount of time, say 10 minutes. So, to get the source of a page, we can use the same method I showed you before, but instead of using the drag and drop API in the browsers, we can use an editable HTML area uh, when the user drops the text onto there. Onto there. So every web browser um, has a rich text editor built in, and it's the kind of thing that you use when you're um, in webmail editors and so on. You can make text bold, you can make it italic, and there you're actually editing HTML. Now what happens is when you uh, select some text on a web page and drop it onto there, it will actually um, copy that HTML and recreate it inside, inside that area. So again, we can drag from one page, one domain, to an editable area on another domain, and all the, the source there will be copied across. Um, this is called design mode or content editable. That's, uh, that's how it works. So content extraction. This is the second technique. So again, a bit more user interaction is required to make this work. So instead of just the one drag that we're using to inject text into, into a form, we need two drags. 
So the first dragger will select the text, the second will drag it out of the page. On the other hand, um, the size of the page doesn't matter. So we can select the entire text of a page, even with just a very small mouse movement. Uh, one interesting way this could be used is for internet reconnaissance. So for example, we may know the URL of a page. It may be, behind, may be in a, a private intranet, but we don't know the content, content of it. Now if we can guess some positions on the page, we can guess uh, the top of the page uh, and roughly where the bottom of the page is, and we can then potentially get that data by dragging it out. So again, this, this technique works in all the latest browsers. Um, in WebKit-based browsers, when we're copying the HTML out of a page, the hidden form fields and script tags don't get copied across, so that's a bit of a limitation with this technique. Um, so we can't use it in this case to still cross out request will do tokens, at least not in Safari and Chrome. Again, I'll show you at the end um, a demo of how that works. So on to technique number three. Now if you think back to the, the text injection, that required a drag and drop to work. Now that's okay, but the question is, can we get a user to do that? And also, if we want to fill in a form with many fields, for example, an address field on an online shopping site, we need to get the user to do a drag for each of those, and that's not likely to happen. However, I've been looking at the Java drag and drop API. <coughs> now, Java has its own drag and drop API separate from the one in web browsers. The API is a bit more advanced than in web browsers, and there are various interesting things that you can do with it. So for example, um, there is a class called mouse drag gesture recognizer. Now in Java applet, we can actually override that to change the behavior of how a drag and drop operation works. So what we can do is, instead of saying, okay, a drag and drop consists of the user holding down the mouse button, moving the mouse a certain number of pixels, and then removing the mouse, we can actually say, okay, when the user holds down the mouse button, then we're gonna start a drag and drop them. And because we can do that, we can drag text from a Java applet using just a click instead of a drag. So we're back to the same user interaction as with traditional click jacking, we're just using a single click to do something interesting. In this case, injecting text into a field. We can actually go even further with the Java um, drag and drop API. And we can say, okay, instead of requiring the user to do anything with the Java applet, actually just start a drag and drop event right now. So a JavaScript on a malicious web page could use a hidden Java applet to force the user to enter text into form fields. And the way this works is that uh, the web page would say, okay, start a drag and drop with this text. And wherever the user's mouse cursor is, the text will be dropped onto that area. So if it's over a text field on, uh, on top, inside an iframe, inside a hidden iframe, then the text will be entered into there. So I'm just gonna show you how that works. This is pretty fun. Okay. So in this case, we have a visible iframe, just so we can see what's going on. In a real click jacking attack, obviously this would be hidden and possibly following the user's mouse cursor. Now you see this little gray square here. This is actually a Java applet. And when I click on it, it will start a drag and drop operation. Or at least when I hold down the mouse button. So I hold down the mouse button and it's moved out of the way. And although the mouse cursor hasn't changed, um, normally, it would change to have a little plus sign to show that a drag and drop was going on. We can actually override that in, again, in, with Java API, we can say, show the default mouse cursor instead of a drag and drop cursor, um, and the user has even less idea of what's going on. So now I'm gonna release the mouse button, and the text is entered into that field. So I can just carry in like that, and fill in an entire form without using cross write request forgery, without using drag and drop, which is pretty cool. Second thing I'm gonna show you is the force drag and drop. So instead of getting the user to click, um, when I, uh, the, the, the script on the page is just gonna say, do a drag and drop um, every, few, every few milliseconds. 
So when I click on the start button, that's going to happen. 